Hi, very good morning to you. It's Gene from Avstar Observatory. Guys, I thought today I'd get some of the other uh, pieces of equipment out, like our atmospheric CO2 monitor, our oxygen sensor, and also our muon detector, take a reading of that, as well as a, a reading from Canada, uh, from one of our superstars over there, Kendall, and uh, put it all together in an Earth Health at a glance uh, over at poleshiftnews.com. We'll take a look at that a bit later on in the video, but before we do, I just wanted to show you uh, what's going on with our world with regards to temperatures and jet streams. Before we do, a big thank you to those of you that are supporting us. You know, guys, I always say this in every video, or near enough every video, you know, we are one of the few YouTuber channels that actually has our own equipment to monitor some of these anomalies for you. We are the only channel with our own Trimax system and a dedicated website uh, which shows you not just from the readings we get from the TriMag and our magnetosphere sensor here in the UK, but from other locations around the world uh, with regards to what's going on with the magnetic intensity. That makes us darn unique and unlike any other YouTube channel. So, you know, if you want to help support what we do and you find some value in some of the videos that we show you, then please, you know, use the link down below in the description make a donation to us and help keep us going um, okay so moving on as we can see uh, there's a lot of our northern hemisphere right now covered in sub-zero temperatures to some degrees around minus 40 degrees let's just take first of all a little look over America wouldn't take much more would it to reach down into the Gulf of Mexico I just wonder what would happen if we was to see that before the end of the winter this year over the Northern Hemisphere. Going back over towards Russia, and I know the video will be tight, slightly out of sync, but I'm sure if you're familiar with you know, your geography, you'll know where we are uh, and what we're talking about at the time uh, you're seeing it. But look at that, right down into the territory of China. And again, over this side of the earth, Sub-zero temperatures reaching down to minus 40 degrees. You know, we're seeing some temperatures that we should be seeing around the equatorial region in the tropics. Take, uh, for instance, Australia right now is warmer than any other continent on the equatorial region. That's bizarre. It's got to be only down to one thing. And that is, you know, some of the anomalies that we're taking, uh, you know, we're going through right now. The Grand Solar Minimum, the magnetic pole reversal, the emerging back into a glacial period. And we, what we could be witnessing here is the very starts of that glacial period taking place. Let's have a quick look at the jet streams. Super jet streams in the subtropics. We have interchange, as you can see coming straight off the Mediterranean from the polar regions, hitting that subtropical jet stream over the Northern Hemisphere. And you know what's gonna happen? When you get a sudden jet of cold air, that subtropical warm air, it's gonna cause flash floods. So it'd be interesting to see what happens over the next few days uh, with regards to you know what is going on uh, in those territories where these super jet streams are being fed by those polar jet streams in the tropical regions just look at that jet stream guys we are definitely definitely in the territory now of seeing some unusual and bizarre uh, temperatures like this for instance the crossover of a subtropical jet stream straight over the equatorial region into the southern hemispheres unprecedented it is never really shocking what we will witness next but this what we're looking at here is a major breakdown of our jet streams on our earth when we look over the northern hemisphere there is no distinction between polar jet streams and subtropical and that is what's setting up these anomalies that break records with regards to unseen unprecedented snowfalls unseen unprecedented rainfalls and unseen unprecedented droughts which cause forest seasons to start much earlier than what they did this 
is our earth as it is going through its massive transformations. You may hear other YouTubers talking about this jet stream here, which is coming from the Northern Hemisphere, from the tropics, straight down over crossing the equatorial region into the Southern Hemisphere, and then look at that chaos that is taking place there. Like I say, unprecedented. Quick look over the Southern Hemisphere. With regards to the jet streams, we see pretty much, you know, the same thing taking place. Polar jet streams intertwining with subtropical over the Southern Hemisphere, and of course, causing the problems which it is localized in those continents down on the Southern Hemisphere. We are watching this unfold firsthand, guys. And it is it is just a surprise you know this is this is this is how our earth is changing right before our eyes you know some people say to me when is it going to start it's already started it started 10 years ago for those people um that haven't yet been affected directly by having their ass wiped away by hurricanes or tornadoes or flash floods for them they seem to think that they're immune to it and I guarantee you that was exactly what was the thoughts of these people that woke up the next day to find that their houses had washed away in flash floods in Europe, in China, in Pakistan, in India and all the other countries around the world where we're seeing these events take place. It is unprecedented. What's largely the cause of it? It is largely caused by the Grand Solar Minimum and not just the Grand Solar Minimum it is largely caused by the Earth going through a very rare event last time it done it was 780,000 years ago it is on our doorsteps and it is affecting our climate and with the two coinciding with each other the problems are being compounded it is allowing more cosmic radiation into our upper atmosphere. As a result, it is modifying the jet streams to the conditions of what we just saw. And as a result of that is why we are seeing, you know, arable cropland go offline in the northern hemisphere. And there is more to come. We haven't even reached equilibrium yet. We're probably around 6,000 years back into this Milenkovic cycle. So we are definitely heading into colder times. The Earth is going to start cooling down and we are going to merge into the next glacial period. We don't know scientifically how fast this can happen. Maybe, maybe some of these government or official departments do have more accurate, accountable information. And maybe they went back and you know studied more in depth detail on those core samples to see how far and how fast you know the climate dropped during the end of the last interglacial period not the one that we have just come out of i'm talking about the one which was nearly a hundred thousand years ago because if i wanted to know more detail about this that is exactly where i would go to the core records going back over just a hundred thousand years ago and I would slice those samples extremely, extremely thin because what I'd be looking at is the change in a dramatic climate because that would tell us that this time round it could be the same, especially if we went back 200,000 years and did the same thing and then 300,000 years, it would confirm that that is what we're looking at. But nevertheless, our world is not geared up for this next glacial period to come in. Why do I say that? It's because they are more concerned about CO2 which is naturally going to drop in any case. They're prepared to invest hundreds of trillions in CO2. They are changing the industries of the world and the world can't simply afford it. The world cannot afford this CO2 um, taxes, you know, carbon credits. Businesses can't afford it. You know, we can't afford it and it's only going to get worse from this point on out like i say we've not reached the equilibrium of the grand solar minimum we haven't started to see an increase or a significant increase in sunspot production 
So we know the healing sphere is still at a weakened state all time over 33 years. It is at a greater weakened state now than it has been over the last 33 years. We know in the last 30 years, the pole migration has accelerated to almost double its normal pace in which it was doing prior to the 1990s. And we know both of these things weaken um, the protective primary shield of our Earth and that allows more cosmic rays in and that means we are going to see more dramatic weather anomalies across the range. Let's go and take a current look at what's happening with other anomalies uh, associated with our Earth. So here we are on our website poleshiftnews.com if you haven't been over there go and have a look we've got quite a bit of stuff on there um, and you can see for yourself where we collect some of the data from just off our website with regards to uh, latest magnetic uh, uh, migration and position um, we always record now the atmospheric CO2 a couple of times a month uh, likewise with the atmospheric oxygen so let's just go through it and we'll uh, get a bit of an idea as to the condition of our elf of our earth at the moment so atmospheric co2 has gone up slightly uh, from when we last took a look of it i think almost by 50 parts per million uh, we've got atmospheric oxygen at 20.18 no changes there it does fluctuate a little bit but there's no concern because if we've got 20 percent oxygen in our atmosphere we're okay there's the uh, latest magnetic pole positions from the 17th of the last month and then we've got the background it uh, background radiation count that's gone up a slight amount uh, then followed by the volcanoes actually in eruption which is gone up by two from the last time we've done uh, for, for, at a glance uh, the latest um, earthquake is in uh, Greece at 5.5 um, there then we've got the muons per meter per square which is uh, 548 for the UK, 980 uh, for Canada. Now, that is exactly what we'd expect to see because Canada is sitting in a lower intensity than what we're seeing over in Russia, so we should expect those numbers to be a lot lower in any case. Um, sunspot numbers have gone down from the last time we've done it. I think it was around about six. Uh, they're now at three. The geomagnetic field is currently quiet and so is solar x-rays at normal. Uh, our jet streams, as you guys know, are unstable and that is because of two primary things that are affecting them. First of all, um, the grand solar minimum, low solar output of the sun and second of all, um, you know, our primary shield going down as a result of the Earth going through a magnetic reversal. So, you know, leaving us with, you know, a total field strength or magnetosphere strength of 50 microteslas so uh, that is the earth alpha at a glance for you guys um, today um, go over to the website like I say you can have a look at sea ice extent you can see that they've replaced it now for this year's uh, new line so we start over on the left hand side of the chart as opposed to where we left off last year at the right hand side again still breaking records since 2012 we've had more sea ice now than we did going back any other year to 2012 do you remember Al Gore's claim there'd be no ice by 2015 kids wouldn't know what snow was and this guy still holds a Nobel Peace Prize. You know, we shouldn't make them give them back. We should do when they do such terrible uh, predictions. What well, all I can say is his crystal ball was wrong. Because he certainly isn't smart enough to know that much about climate to get it so badly wrong. Seven years on, we've got more snow and ice over the Northern Hemisphere than we have since 2012. And we're going to be breaking records going back soon, I believe, this year to 1972 average we're going to pop over that line which means we are going to be putting on millions of square more kilometers over the northern hemisphere of ice guys there's a link down there if you want to help support what we do i really hope that a few more people do find an interest and want to keep us going here at the observatory and uh, if you do links down there any other thing to, for me to say is guys take care of your loved ones get some preps done just in case and start thinking about you know what you'll do as you return back into this glacial period because as you guys know it is not going to be sustainable 
to be in a city or in a large town because when the grids go down it's like people's intelligence follows very quickly in the same direction we've seen it before cannibalism was rife back in the 1940s during the big blockade of Stalingrad and if you think that that mentality can't come back in the blink of an eye you're very wrong because we haven't learned too much since then have we I think you'd agree guys link down there in the description take care of your loved ones as always bye for now